Good day, everyone. Today, we will be talking about 10 theorists and their contribution to curriculum development. But before that, let us define curriculum. What is curriculum? Curriculum is the outline of concepts to be taught to students to help them meet the content standards. It also refers to the interactive system of instruction and learning with specific goals, contents, strategies, measurements, and resources. Now that we've defined curriculum, let's proceed to the 10 theorists who contributed to curriculum development. Our first theorist is Albert Bandura. He is a social cognitive theorist who describes how people become self-controlled and self-regulated learners. Contributions He and others use a triadic model including personal characteristics, behavioral patterns, and environmental factors that interact and cause an individual to choose personal behavior. Bandura uses the term personal agency to illustrate that individuals have control over their behavior and thus can ultimately assume greater and greater responsibility for their learning. Our second theorist is John Dewey. He is an educational philosopher who wanted educational psychology to have practical applications. Contributions He established major laboratories to explore his ideas. He believed that the child is an active learner. Prior to his work, it was thought that the learner should sit and passively learn in a rote manner. Dewey felt that learning should focus on the whole child and that the learning should relate to the world in which the learner lives. He also believed that all children, regardless of their social, economic, or racial, or ethnic background, should be allowed to learn and have a good education. Our third theorist is John Piaget. He is an educational theorist whose conception of intellectual development is based on systems of organization and adaptation. Contributions He believed that these tendencies are both physiological and mental. He said the mind is a constant process of working with all the data it experiences. Some information simply fits in the schema and is organized for future use. But when other information is beyond current understanding, the mind must work to transform experiences into a form that the individual can use. Our fourth theorist is Abraham Maslow. He is a psychologist who studied human behavior and studied the well-being of well-adjusted individuals. He called these people self-actualizers. Contributions Some of his most significant propositions are number one, each individual is born with an essential inner nature. Number two, the inner self is shaped by unconscious thoughts and feelings but not dominated by them. Number three, children should be allowed to make many choices about their own development. And fourth, parents and teachers need to help children make wise choices by satisfying their physiological, safety, love, belonging, and self-esteem needs. Our fifth theorist is Lei Vygotsky. He is a social-cultural theorist who maintains that how we think is a function of both social and cultural forces. Contributions He believed that all learning is shaped by the way parents and culture think and interact. Vygotsky says that Social interaction is a primary cause of cognitive growth. Vygotsky suggests that learners can obtain cognitive skills through conversation and interaction with those who are older and more experienced. It is the explanations that teachers and parents give to children that allow them to grow cognitively. Our sixth theorist is Howard Gardner. He is a theorist who conceptualizes intelligence into eight separate types of abilities. Contributions 
He created the multiple intelligences, and these are logical, mathematical, linguistic, musical, spatial, bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and naturalist. Gardner theorizes that these intelligences are independent of one another. He says they can be demonstrated at different levels in each domain. Our seventh theorist is D.F. Skinner. He is a behavioral learning theorist who asserts that one learns that many voluntary experiences are strengthened when they are reinforced or weakened when they are rewarded, ignored, or punished. Contributions His theory includes operant conditioning and refers to the fact that organisms learn to operate in their environment in order to obtain or avoid a particular consequence. The term instrumental is used because the behavior is instrumental in bringing about the consequence. Our eighth theorist is Vera Charters. He is a pioneering researcher in teacher education and curriculum development. Contributions Charters believe that curriculum should focus on students' needs as determined by needs assessment. He saw curriculum as a process. He thought objectives should be listed with their corresponding activities and evaluated. Our ninth theorist is Harold Roth. He is an educational reformer in early to mid-1900s associated with progressive education movement. Contributions Rod believed education should have a societal context and be child-centered. He saw social studies as an important part of the content. Thought curriculum should be structured into objectives with related learning experiences and outcomes. Our 10th theorist is Ralph Tyler. He is an American educator who worked in the field of assessment and evaluation. Contributions Tyler believed that curriculum should be influenced by data about students and society, psychology, philosophy, and ideas from subject specialists. He saw the content as organized into objective and learning of the objectives should be measured. Now that we have already presented the theories, I hope that you learned a lot from it. Thank you so much!